Pets, and welcome to another episode of Natural Pets TV. I'm joined by Heidi Nebula, Dr. Liz Bales, and Dr. Patrick Mahaney. Dr. Liz, I want to ask you about anxiety. I hear that thrown around for almost everything these days. What is anxiety actually all about? So for a cat, they perceive the world differently than a human does. So a cat is both a predator and prey. So they are seeing the world in sort of a heightened state of alert. And they're not thinking about anxiety like I have to pay the mortgage, I got done by my girlfriend. <laughs> what they're seeing is how do I move and interact with my surroundings in a way that makes me feel comfortable or am I distressed by what's happening in my surroundings and I can't get to a place where I feel comfortable. And this can happen just by moving the furniture. If you go away on vacation and there's a different person providing food and water for your cat, uh, this can happen. Um, if it's Christmas time and you have more guests coming over. You know, a cat is really, really sensitive to their environmental surroundings. And instead of thinking of it as anxiety, you could think of it as distress. They're, they find distress in things that, uh, that you and I might find very normal, like moving the sofa to the other side of the living room. So to help prevent these things, um, we can employ some environmental enrichment strategies, like having lots of places for your cat to hide, to climb to a height, to be able to feel safe and secure. Something a lot of people don't know is cats really like to utilize vertical space. So even if you're in a, a studio apartment, you can have bookcases or uh, cat trees or things that can allow your cat to climb to a height to feel safe and secure. Um, there's a lot of different ways to address anxiety in cats, and how, how do you do that in your practice? Well, I think so, um, some of the manifestations that we often see involve, um, surrounding anxiety involve the litter box and also habits that occur in the litter box. Um, even something as simple as like, you're in there using the bathroom at the same time as <laughs> the cat wants to use okay. the bathroom, and the litter box is in the bathroom with you, and you shut the door, the cat's going to find someplace else to go. So your nice comfortable bed, your best duvet, your, be your, um, your uh, clothes hamper, There's so many places the cat could decide to poop or pee and that's gonna cause problems with your relationship with your cat. It's gonna start to make you think, is there an actual health problem going on? And the thing is a lot of times anxious cats do develop health problems over time. Chronic vomiting, inappropriate defecation, inappropriate urination, and the urinary part especially is concerning because that can kind of go down the road of a whole other host of issues. So it's really important that we always think about making our home as, as low stress as possible for our feline friends. I think you talked about routine a little bit. That's important. Um, visiting guests, bringing in a new pet, mm -hmm. um, even a new pet accessory or feeding cats together, keeping the water dishes and the feeding bowls too close together. Those things, um, we can be as pet parents, be creating a lot of stress in our cats too. They might vocalize, they might self wound by over licking or nice. too much withdrawal, excessive withdrawal. And so those are all things that we, that actually visible signs that they would show us. Then it becomes uh, a means of how we'll deal with it. Uh, and and in terms of, of the discussions that I have with pet parents who are calling, um, if they let's say they want to do something natural and there's all sorts of you know in, in terms of addressing cat anxiety there's you know things to wrap them with there's um, other medications we have uh, s uh, herbal mixes sometimes standalone like valerian root extract is is pretty well tolerated by cats and it's generally recognized as safe but we also have um, uh, more pronounced mixtures specific to like you could do we have an omega-3 or we, we or I'm familiar with omega-3 that I like that um, it, in, it increases serotonin and tryptophan, so that's a nice um, regulator of the endocrine system, of the, heart, the cardiovascular, digestive, so, and it's, an, it's a highly nutritive thing, so you're not necessarily going directly into anxiety, a specific anxiety uh, supplement. Um, another one I like to use, like learn what we mentioned, these are probably very common and most people in the audience will know, um, passion flower is really well tolerated, um, different forms of mint. And then you get a little more, bit more uh, specialized, like there, there's a plant called malungu that is specific to the single GABA stress receptor in the brain. So you could even, if, you know, depending on, on the length and the extent of anxiety your cats are experiencing, there's a lot of natural options that you could employ 
employee to try to bring that threshold down and find out what the real problem is and give it, giving the cat problem solving tools so they can work through that anxiety and get toward um, behavior they're comfortable with or the environment they're comfortable with. You talk about problem solving. Sometimes a cat just needs something to do with their mental mm -hmm. time. You know, we, we have an environment where we really ask nothing of the cat and there's no way for them to really engage with their environment. So a couple of ways that we can take their mind off their worries, if you will, and give them something positive to do is mm -hmm. active play. Mm -hmm. Even five minutes a day, play with your cat with a wand toy, with a ball, whatever your cat finds uh, the most desirable. A total of 15 minutes per day, maybe broken up into three segments, might be easier for people to achieve, but something to do to keep your cat engaged. In addition, we know cats are solitary hunters, so you brought up the fact that feeding uh, from a bowl in, in, a, in a group situation, if you have a multi-cat household, can be really stressful. Mm -hmm. So providing multiple feeding stations for a cat, mm -hmm. and better yet, giving them the opportunity to hunt and go around the house and spend their mental time really engaged with the environment, trying to find their food source, interact with it and eat, as opposed to just having that stationary bowl. You talked about, about litter box. I think um, multi-cat households are really interesting and can be very complicated when it comes to, to the litter box. How do you recommend that um, multi-cat families manage having a, enough litter boxes in enough different spots? <laughs> right. It can be really challenging. At least one litter box per cat per household. Um, the more the better, really. I think you can always find a place that you can put one. I mean, you might have to compromise your aesthetic and have a, another litter box someplace, but there are also lots of nice litter boxes. You could even do something custom made if you wanted, just to give your, your cat that opportunity. And having different types, some that are covered, some that are uncovered, it's always a little more challenging if you have other stressors in the household, like dogs that want to like get themselves in the litter box too, to have some <laughs> kitty roca. Certainly never a good thing for anybody. But at the same time, you always want to think like giving cats as many places as possible to urinate. And also, besides just like the environmental enrichment part, the climbing part, like getting your cat outside Cats love to be outside. I don't mean just letting your cat roam free, but put put an appropriate cat harness on them and take them for a walk. Mm -hmm. A lot of the harnesses even have flexible leads so that they can go and then kind of be pulled back a little bit. And cats love that. It really it really stimulates the brain. It lets them see different things. I mean, who wants to just be inside like a 200 square foot apartment all day when you could actually go for a walk? And of course, that's challenging in certain places like cities. But if you have any kind of park, you could put your cat in a carrier, take the cat to the park, have them on with that appropriate restraint and give them a lot of behavioral and physical stimulation. So I think uh, uh, the takeaway is to provide both the stimulation and the resting places mm -hmm. to keep your cat safe and comfortable. And if that's not doing it, then intervention with herbs or medicine might be where you need to head. And anxious behaviors too. They can they can occur any time in life. They often occur in adult and geriatric cats, and especially with that adult and geriatric cat getting a proper medical workup. Because I've seen many times like, oh, my cat's chronically vocalizing. They're starting to in urinate inappropriately. They're not acting quite themselves, and maybe the cat is mature and developing feline hyperthyroidism, yeah. and then you actually have a medical problem that's creating the anxious state. So it's really important that you work closely and have a good open communication with your veterinarian to figure out what is going on and are we fully addressing the problem. And, and in addition to your veterinarian, your veterinarian might do that work up and find that there's a physical problem, mm -hmm. or if it's, if it's not a physical problem, they might recommend some more intervention with a, a veterinary behaviorist. Absolutely. Um, there are veterinarians that specialize just in behavior. One can be found through your vet's referral or online. And it's a very long process, not long like weeks and months, but it's like a two hour appointment where they go through all aspects of the cat's mm. lifestyle and feeding and health. And it's even better if that veterinarian, the specialist can come to the home and see things themselves. And it's a great learning process for, for the pet parent to understand just how their life and their surroundings really impacts that cat. Absolutely. A lot of great useful information from excellent experts. Thank you for joining us here on Natural Pets TV. Hey folks, thanks for joining us here on Natural Pets TV. So many great topics, so many wonderful experts, but we want to keep the conversation going in the comment section down below. Let us know what you think. Let us know what you want us to cover in future episodes. And if you want more information, you can always reach out to us at PetWorldInsider.com or for more information from our guests, you can get that at, for Heidi Nevela, Nature of Pets with a Z.com, for Dr. Liz Bales, NoBowlCat.com, and for Dr. Patrick Mahaney, PatrickMahaney.com. Thanks for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you again soon.